Amen. Hallelujah. And so, um, <clears throat> so far, um, we've studied the work uh, plan of God and the work of God from Adam, hallelujah, uh, until the coming Christ, a, a period of approximately 4,000 years. And, um, you know, in preparation for the earthly ministry of Jesus. And remember, Jesus did come. Jesus came and ministered on the earth uh, for a period of about three and a half years his ministry uh, was. Jesus was not uh, going around and, um, at 12 years old and turning clay pigeons into living pigeons and all the other stuff that some people have come up with. Uh, G Jesus wasn't traveling caravans of the world and, you know, doing all this stuff. Jesus, what, do, you know, do you know what he was doing? Is this not the carpenter, Joseph's son? He was a carpenter's apprentice. Hello. <laughs> growing up, you know, and uh, he was being prepared uh, by his father. And he became a carpenter like his uh, earthly father. The only, the only reference to the 12-year-old we have in the Bible is he was at the temple reasoning with the priest when they had come to Jerusalem for Passover. All right? And uh, he got left behind and he told them, no, you're not that I must be about my father's business. And so this is the only reference to that early stage of Jesus. So from the time he was born, nothing except that one event does the Bible record. It does not record him traveling the world, make working miracles. As a matter of fact, when he turned the water into wine, this is the first miracle when he came into Canaan out of Galilee. Okay? So, you know, I, I like sticking with the Bible instead of uh, people coming up with stuff. You know, just it's nicer to stay with the word. Hallelujah. Anyway, and so um, Jesus came. He had the ministry on the earth for three and a half years. Uh, he did were written down. He didn't. He supposed that the world itself could not contain the volumes of. In other words, there's a whole bunch of stuff that didn't get written down. Okay. Now you know sometimes stuff is used to be um, exaggerated on purpose, but it really you know we, we don't know if it wouldn't hold the world. You know, but he did a bunch of stuff. Okay, but you know, uh, we have recorded, um, there are 31 recordings in the four Gospels of miracles. 19 of them are different, meaning that, you know, the other 12 are repeats in the different Gospel of an event that happened and already happened in one. So that, like in the Synoptic Gospels, we may have three recordings of the same miracle. We don't count it as a different miracle. So there's 31 miracles recorded. 19 of them are different, okay? And so um, there's a reason that God chose those 19 to emphasize. And uh, one of the reasons is of the 19, 12 say uh, it was according to the faith of the person. Okay? So putting an emphasis on the fact that faith will receive from God and get answers. Hallelujah. Can y'all say glory? Praise God. And so when Jesus died on the cross, was raised from the dead, and went and sat down at the right hand of the Father, the ministry of Jesus did not cease. Say, the ministry of Jesus did not cease. It changed. See, there is a present-day ministry of Jesus. Now, he is not walking the earth, laying hands on the sick. He's not walking the earth, casting out devils. He's not walking the earth, raising the dead. Why? Because he said, you go. And in my name, you do these things. And the works that I do, you shall do, and greater than these, because I go unto the Father. Amen. And so the, the ministry that Jesus had on the earth, his body is now carrying out. We're going around and uh, preaching the gospel. Amen. Teaching in the synagogues. Healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Amen. Now, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, let me just say this because of what Jesus said before his ascension and so forth. That, that truth now lies on the church, how God's anointed the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to go about doing good, healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people, for God is with us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> how do you know that? Well, in the Great Commission. Hallelujah. Are you, are you here? 
He said, Go you in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Hallelujah. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. And then he goes on and says this, And they'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So the anointing of the, of, of the master himself has come on the church to do what? The works that he did and greater. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, was that greater in quantity or in greater in, in, in kind of miracle? Uh, I don't know. I, I got I to gotta tend. Well, you can really go both ways with it. One is we get to get people born again. Amen. Hallelujah. We get to lead them to Jesus and get them, and get them saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was no new birth until... Um, Jesus was raised from the dead. But we, because Jesus was limited by space and time in his earth walk, we can do number greater because we're all over the world. <clears throat> I mean, just with Rhema, Rhema, um, Rhema itself, did you know the sun never sets on a Rhema graduate? In other words, there's a, everywhere in the world when the sun's up, there's Rhema graduates preaching the gospel. If the sun's up, there's a Rhema graduate preaching somewhere in the, on, the, on the planet. Hallelujah. Because we're all over the world. That's just us. That's not, I mean, that doesn't include the, the, the Baptists and the Methodists and the, you know, whoever else has got people out there uh, sharing the truth. Just our organization. Hallelujah. Alone. Glory to God. And so we're all over the world. Amen. Christians are all over the world. And so the signs and wonders that Jesus did in one locale, limited to one, time, one area of space, we've got that all over the world exponentially uh, carried out. Glory to God. So greater works than these shall you do, because I go unto my Father. Hallelujah. And what was he going to do when he went to the Father? He was going to send the promise. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Amen. If I go not away, I'll, I won't be able to send the Comforter. But when the Comforter has come, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Called the greater one, being in us. And he that's in the world. Praise God forevermore. <clears throat> so... The earthly ministry of, that Jesus carried out of preaching, teaching, and healing, we carry out. Amen. 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 So what's he doing? Well, he's not down here so we can sing, reach out, and touch the Lord as he passes by. Now, growing up, I mean, I don't know if you sang that in the Baptist church. We still sang it in the Pentecostal church. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your hearts cry. He's passing by this moment your need to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Didn't you ever read where he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you? Oh, yeah. He's not passing by, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. We kind of sang it as an ultra song. You know, come down here, we're going to minister to you. And reach out and get the Lord before he gets away. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, I, I get it, but, you know, at the same time, the fact is, he's present. Yes. He said, lo, I'm with you always, yes. even until the end of the age, end of the world, end of the age. It, actually, in Greek, I believe ethos, um, into the, into the end of the age. I'm with you. I'm not going to leave you. So we don't have to reach out and touch him while he's passing by. He's right there for us to lay hold of right now all the time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So what is the ministry of Jesus today? If he's rested from the ministry he, he carried out in the earth and we've taken it up, what is he doing today? Well, he didn't come down here, you know, spend 33 and a half years on the earth, go back, sit down by the Father and say, man, that was rough. I'm done. Now, some of you come home from work, especially if you work for the school system. There's days you you come home from work and go, I made it through another one. <laughs> Maybe that kid will stay home tomorrow. <laughs> As a matter of fact, him and his him and his two buddies, they'll stay home tomorrow. You know? Lord, can't you just put can't you put something on to make them want to stay home? That's not very godly, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just stay home tomorrow. We don't need y'all to come to church. I mean work. Well, we'll bring you to church and help you out, but oh my. And I, I got, we got teachers all in here. We all feel that way some days. I, I forgot to share, so to tell people we're alive and online. Glory to God. We want to know we're alive and online. <laughs> Amen. 
We're really alive, but we want to know that we're alive and online so they can come, they can join us. All right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's look here. Now, Jesus is no longer the meek and lowly man of Galilee. He's, he's ascended from that. Are you here? Um, he's not the lowly Jesus. He's not the Jesus on the cross. Like one guy said, and listen, Christianity did not begin using the cross until a couple, three centuries after Christ as a symbol of the church. They actually, in the, in the early church, they used the, the fish. The symbol of the fish was used. And I-X-O-Y-E, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is the Greek word for fish. And those letters become an acronym, Jesus Christ. Uh, each, word, each letter is the first letter of, the, of an acronym, Jesus Christ, God's Son and Savior. Okay? But the early church used the sign of the fish because they were fishers of men. You see? Later, the cross became, and our, and our theology became cross-oriented. Now, don't, don't misunderstand me. The cross is important. Because you've got to go through the cross to get to the throne. Amen? Hello? But it was not the, it was not the symbol of the church. The, the sign of the fish was <clears throat> to be fishers of men. Because they were, Jesus went to the cross. It was a place of shame. It was a place of suffering. It was a place of judgment. Hallelujah. But he's been raised up from that. So he's no longer uh, um, the, the Christ on the cross. He's no longer God's suffering servant. Are you here? Um, because of what he's done, we can fearlessly act on the word. So, he is the surety of the word. Amen. He possesses all authority of heaven and earth. Um, Hebrews 7.22 says, Jesus became the surety of a better covenant. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he obtained an ministry, according to Hebrews 8.6, that's more excellent than the predecessors in the, in, in, in the priesthoods. By much, by uh, so much, he's also the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted upon better promises. The better, the new covenant has been enacted or established, and it's based on the word. He's the surety. The, today, he's at the right hand of the Father, possessing all authority, making every word and every promise come true. Hallelujah! So let's look at Jesus. First of all, let's make this statement. Jesus sat down at the right hand of our Father, not to cease from ministry, but to enter into a new ministry as our high priest, as our mediator, as our intercessor, as our advocate, and of the surety of the new covenant. Glory to God. So this really is the present day ministry of Jesus. He has the ministry of high priest. He has the ministry of mediator. He has the ministry of intercessor, advocate, and the surety of the covenant. So as our high priest, and under the old covenant, the priesthood established under the law of Moses put Aaron and his descendants, hallelujah, of the tribe of Levi, are you here? Over the priesthood, Aaron being the first high priest. And... Um, he was a type, he was a type of Jesus. In other words, the high priest ministered of the holy things of God, the holiest of all things. The high priest ministered of things that even the priesthood could not minister. The high priest would enter in once a year with the blood of, of bulls and goats to go to the mercy seat of God, not for his not not just for the sins of the people, but for his own sins. Hallelujah. Jesus entered in once and for all to obtain an eternal redemption for us. Okay. <clears throat> One, and so forth. And so you look at that, you can find that in Hebrews 9, 25, and 10 through 1 through 4. The priesthood stood ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices for sin over and over and over and over. Kind of like that Frosty Morn commercial. Sing it over and over and over again. Offerings for sin. They did it all the time. Well, I tell you, you had to have a wide open lamb uh, operation just to be able to have enough um, uh, sacrificial stuff. Yeah. Are you here? Christ entered in with his own blood once, Hebrews 9, 12 and 23 through 27. When God accepted the blood of Jesus, he signified that the claims of justice had been met and that man could legally be taken from Satan's authority and restored the fellowship to God himself. <clears throat> 
By the sacrifice of himself, Hebrews 9, 26 says, Jesus put away sin. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that by the sacrifice of himself, he put away sin? Hallelujah. And what does it say? Now the end of the world hath he appeared to put away the sin by the sacrifice of himself. The crime of high treason that Adam committed has been met and settled, and the judgment of that has been satisfied. Glory to God by one sacrifice for sin, Hebrews 10, 12. And so that by the sacrifice of himself, he sanctified man, separated man. All right? To, san san to, san to sanctify means to set apart, to separate um, away from. Okay? He sanctified, he separated man from Satan's authority and domain. Jesus met Mary after his resurrection, and he said, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Remember, we've talked about this, how it really meant in the Greek. Clutch me not, don't hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. But go tell the brethren and Peter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He specifically said, Go tell Peter. Amen. Hallelujah. What you've seen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the mercy and the love of God. Because Peter would probably been thinking, yeah, but he probably he would probably 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 pull an Eeyore. That's no matter. I don't measure up. I denied him three times. And God knew that. And Jesus knew that. So he said, go tell the brethren and Peter. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wanted to make sure Peter knew. Glory to God. He was raised up and there was forgiveness. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves us. Yeah, I said, God loves us. Praise God forevermore. Blessed be his name forever. Um, he was on his way to the Father to take his blood. Hallelujah. And put it on the mercy seat. Jesus' ministry as high priest does not end with the carrying of his blood into the holy place. He still minister. He is still the minister of the sanctuary. Hebrews 8, 2. I wonder, I wonder who. Do -do -boop -boop. Who wrote the book of Hebrews? We did that one time. We had a luau and we changed that song to Who Wrote the Book of Hebrews? <laughs> Hebrews, I mean, um, Hebrews 8, now, verse 1. Now, the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, who is set at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary, and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. Hallelujah. Now remember, Jesus' priesthood <clears throat> is not after the order of Aaron. It's after the order of Melchizedek. <clears throat> Amen. Abraham tithed to Melchizedek while uh, Aaron was still in his loins. Are you here? Aaron came later after Abraham. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, the higher priesthood, having neither beginning or end nor genealogy, so forth and so on. Hallelujah. That's the priesthood that Jesus is after. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Praise be to his name forever. The word sanctuary actually in Greek means holy things. Jesus is the high priest and minister of holy things. He oversees the holy things of God. Glory to God. Um, we don't really even know how to worship him as we ought. But he is able to take our crude, limited ability to uh, convey our heart to him and make it a sweet smelling savor before the Father. Amen. Glory to God. The holy things are our spiritual sacrifices. He even says to offer our bodies a living sacrifice, which King James says reasonable service. The Greek really says spiritual service. Now, I, you know, sometimes, sometimes I wonder what they, where they were getting their thoughts from in some of their translations, you know, how it meant in that era and the time that language was written how that word would convey that thought. But, you know, I mean, you know, languages morph. There's a time that when you went, man, that's bad. It meant it wasn't good. Then you know, we all remember back in the 70s, man, when you went, man, that is bad. That mean, it was awesome. Now when you go, oh, that's great. You don't mean that was really awesome? Do you mean that was 
Terrible. Hello? Y'all know what I'm talking about? So words morph in, in meaning over time. And so um, that's, why, that's why we do need to go back to, um, to original language and do some study sometimes because uh, maybe the translation used a word that at that time conveyed a different thought than it would today. And I always like to use charity. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 with the word charity is used because when we think of charity today, we think of United Way or something similar. However, that word, and, and, and that made sense to them at the time, as we've said before. Uh, landowners to give something to a peon, you know, tenant farmer would have to be unconditional love because they're higher. They're greater. They're a different class of being to be a landowner. And you little peons, for me to give you something was, that was charitable, was, was uh, unconditional love. You know, being so great that I am as a landowner to stoop down and to bless you. So it carried a different meaning than it does today. Because we just think, uh, it's $10 out of my check this month, and we get to wear jeans the rest of the year. They do that at our schools, you know. If you'll give, if you'll give $10 to the United Way, um, then we'll um, let you wear jeans the rest of the year to work. Okay? So that's the kind of stuff they do to get you to give. <clears throat> so it's not unconditional love. You're doing it because there's an there's a, there's a, there's a in it for you. You see what I'm saying? However, the Greek word is translated as agape or agapo, um, uh, depending on the noun, the verb, and the tense and all that stuff. Um, but it, that means the unconditional love of God. Love, love, the same love that the Father exhibited when he loved the world. And Jesus actually coined that word from the Greek at the time of the language and, and gave it that unconditional meaning. Okay? In the New Testament thought. In New Testament theology, that's when it kind of morphed into that meaning um, from the, from the uh, classical Greek <clears throat> and even uh, Septuagint Greek. Um, moving right along, all right? So the holy things are our spiritual sacrifices. He makes them acceptable to the Father. So every prayer, worship is accepted by the Father when it's presented in the name of Jesus. 1 Peter 2, 5 says, Ye also as living stones are built upon a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, King James says, by alternate translation says, through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who makes them acceptable to the Father. You're unable to convey properly. He, he fixes it. He's a spiritual thing fixer. Amen. Amen. Isn't it good to have a spiritual thing fixer? Hallelujah. Well, that's not what I meant was this. You know, you don't have to explain. Jesus fixes it. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he is, um, when we study the high priest ministry of Jesus in Hebrews, which is where we see that, he's merciful and faithful high priest. He's the high priest who, can't, who, who can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. He, know, he knows what it's like to, to be tempted. He knows what it's like to be to hurt. He knows what it's like to hunger. He knows what it's like to be persecuted. Amen? He knows what it's like to be betrayed. I mean, the Benedict Arnold of all time is Judas. I don't know why we use Benedict Arnold. Judas was a lot worse. Hello? Uh, but Benedict Arnold was what, what, what war? Revolutionary? There you go. So it's kind of kind of close to us and in, in, in fighting off the Brits. We, we didn't have a whole lot of love for the Brits after the war. Okay? And um, we, we've, we've, we've bonded that some, although we still think we're superior. And because we are. I mean, you know, the fact that we are just kind of helps with that. And I'm just being funny right now. I love the British. I, mean, I, wasn't, when I, I didn't like their food. I, thank God we got some different food. Their food was terrible. <laughs> you might like it. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis kind of, he's, he's in all that kind of stuff. I, I did not like the British food. It was like, they eat this stuff? I went and got a pizza, and I'm like, how do you mess up pizza? 
<laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, I, I had the hardest time finding anything that last night I went, man, I need to go to I need to go to Germany and get some real food. <laughs> you know, get some schnitzel. Get some Schwein schnitzel. I, <laughs> yeah. And just so you know, Estonians cook schnitzel as good as the Germans because they were in the German occupation for so long in, in his, their history. They all cook schnitzel. Ooh. It's fried pork. It's, nothing, it's like fried pork chops, but it's good. It, it's, it slap your mama good is how good it is. Okay. So Jesus is our, I, I just mess around now. Jesus is our high priest. Say, Jesus is my high priest. Jesus. He ministers the holy things of God. He ministers and takes the spiritual things you're offering to God and makes them acceptable to the Father. Amen? Even because your heart's right and you desire, you want to be a blessing, even in the crudeness of our, you know, of our inability to fully express it, he, he can turn into a sweet-smelling savor before the Father. Hallelujah. And he, he is forever. Hebrews 6, 19, he is forever our high priest. Amen? He entered into that veil as an anchor in the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entered into the, that veil. Hallelujah. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. Jesus is also our mediator. When Christ sat down at the Father's right hand, he satisfied the claims of justice and became the mediator between God and man. Praise God. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, 5, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, there is one mediator. There is one, amen? There is one between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Why? Because he's fully God and fully man. And so he can stand between the two and pull them together through him. Amen? In him. Now, what does the Bible say? In him we live and move and have our being. Glory to God. Is we, we go through, so we come in contact with the Father through Jesus. The Father comes in contact with us through the Son. He's the mediator. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Thank you, Father, for the, for the Son. Can you say amen? amen? Praise be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Um, he, he's the mediator for two reasons. Glory to God. Um, because of what he is. He's the mediator because of, he's man's mediator because of what he is, and he's man's mediator because of what he's done. What he is, he's in union with, uh, he, he, is the, he is the union of God and man. John 1, 14. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. Nothing was made that was made that he didn't make. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 14, and the Word was made flesh. Hallelujah. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. Hallelujah. Full of grace and truth. Dwelt tabernacled in the Greek. <coughs> Some translations will say tented. They'll say tabernacled or tented, like the uh, tabernacle in the desert. Amen. Jesus tabernacled. He, he took the glory of God, which man could not come in contact with in the Holy of Holies. They would die. And it was put into flesh and clothed in flesh. And he could lay hands on the sick. And he could, he could touch humanity with God coming out of him. And it wouldn't destroy him, praise God. So because of what he is, he's our mediator. Amen? Hallelujah. He is the one who existed on equality with God, according to Philippians chapter 2. Amen? Philippians chapter 2. And being found fashion, verse 8, found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Hallelujah. Uh, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him 
and give it unto him a name that is above every name. Glory to God. Are you here? Amen. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Things in heaven, things earth, and things beneath the earth. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, he is on the equality with God. The Bible says he stripped himself of his rights to deity and the glory. Now, that, the King James doesn't say it that way. Hallelujah. Um, don't know what that is right off because it's not in my notes. But glory. He bridged the gulf between God and man. He is equal with God. He is equal with man. He can represent humanity before God, and he can represent God before humanity. Hallelujah. And he, so he is, let me use it this way. How many of you have ever tried to make uh, fetish, uh, Alfredo sauce? Now, Alfredo sauce is pretty simple. It's butter, cream, and Parmesan cheese. Now, if you want to put a little garlic or something in it, you can to kind of give it maybe a little different flavor. But if you make it and you, you put the proportions in there and stir it up and get it, you know, boil it and so forth, uh, if you let it sit five minutes, it'll separate. The butter will start separating back out and that kind of stuff. The, the, the cheese will clunk up. Unless you put cornstarch or egg whites in it. And that will bond those things together. And we call that an emulsifier. Okay? The egg white or the cornstarch is an emulsifier. It bonds two things that won't normally bond together, together. Jesus is our spiritual emulsifier. <laughs> Hallelujah. He bonds man to God in a way that could not happen before. And they don't separate. Just like the Alfredo says, will not separate if you put the emulsifier in it. It'll stay together. I didn't believe it until I did it. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Took egg whites. All right, go ahead and separate. It didn't do it. Hallelujah. And you can take water and a little cornstarch and stir that and pour that in there. And it doesn't change the flavor, but it bonds it. Jesus is a spiritual emulsifier that bonds God to man and man to God. Hallelujah. He's the only one that can. Yeah. Amen. Praise God forevermore. It's just exciting. You know, some, some of y'all just learned something tonight, didn't you, about um, Alfredo sauce. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I work on anything like that that separates when you cook it. If you put, if you put egg white or, or cornstarch in it, it will bond it to, together. All righty. Um, He can represent humanity before God. However, this was not the sufficient ground for a mediation between God and man. Man had a, was an eternal criminal before God. He was alienated from God under the judgment of Satan. So he had, something had to be done, right? <clears throat> there had to be a case one that made it legal to put it together. So first of all, he's our mediator because of what he is. Or who he is. Secondly, he's our mediator because of what he's done. It was a two-fold event. Amen? Him becoming and doing. You know, you, you now have been reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and without blemish and unreprovable before him. Colossians 1.22. God reconciled us to himself through Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.18. Although Jesus, being God and man, was the one that could bring us together, he couldn't until the reconciliation was made legal. Man was unrighteous in his condition of spiritual death. And while he was in that condition, he could not approach God. Neither could a mediator approach him, God for him in that state. Christ reconciled us to God through his death on the cross so that he now presents. Remember what the Bible say? He led captivity captive. Yeah. When he came up out of hell, he brought all the Old Testament saints with him. Yeah. Led captivity captive, led them right out of there and led them on a processional to heaven, praise God. And after his blood was accepted, presented them to the Father as the first, as, as the first of the church. Praise yeah. God forevermore. Amen. Yeah, amen. Glory to God. And now man has the right to approach God 
based on the medi mediatorial work of Jesus Christ. From the fall of man until Jesus sat down at God's right hand, no man had ever approached God except over a bleeding sacrifice, a divinely appointed priesthood, or by angelic visitations or dreams. On the ground of his high priestly ministry offering his own blood, he perfected our redemption, satisfied the claims of justice, made it possible for God to legally give man eternal life, ma uh, making him righteous and giving him standing as a son. Every unsaved man now has the legal right to approach God. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Isn't that just wonderful news? Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No. Ain't no way. I think I'm running out of time. Okay. Jesus is our intercessor. So he's our high priest. He's our, uh, he's our mediator. Now he's also our intercessor. He carried his own blood into the Holy of Holies, satisfied the claims of justice. As, inter as mediator, he introduces us to God. He is the way to God. No man can approach God except through him. No man cometh to the Father but by me, Jesus said. Now, folks, we cannot take the Bible and look at it through the lens of, well, that was just a book written by men, and, you know, um, there were good principles there, but, you know, I don't exactly see all that the way. You either have to accept it as it is, the Word of God, or don't accept it at all. It all stands together and falls together. It's not a pick and, it's not an all-you-can-eat buffet, pick and choose what you like. Now, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet, but you've got to eat everything there is. Okay, you can't, you can't say, I don't, I don't want that one. No, you can't do that. Hallelujah. And uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to have to do because um, we've got to break this room down and get it ready for the meeting. We're, we're going to stay with the intercessor, and then we're going to quit for the night, all right? And we'll pick up next week, okay? Because, uh, listen, I'm having more fun than you are. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying myself way more than you're enjoying me preaching, so uh, I could go right on the rest of the night. Glory to God. Jesus is the way to God. You know, you can't approach any other way than him. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, I like to tell people this when they say, well, Jesus was one of many prophets of the old, one of the enlightened ones. He was a good man. No, hey, let me say you something, folks. You don't make statements like, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You're either who you say you are or the biggest fraud and liar that ever walked the earth. That's right. Fraud, I mean, good men don't lie right. and say, I'm the only way. And he said, I'm it. There's no other way. You can only get to the Father through me. And so he, that's either true or it's not. You accept that by faith or you don't. There's just not, a, there's not an in-between there. You understand? You can't go, well, I like his teachings. He's such a good man. But he lied some. He was saying he was the only one. A little arrogance there. But, you know, I can put up with that because I think his teachings are good. No. Oh. He made it very clear. It, fall, it stands together, it falls together. No in-between. Okay? Um, as soon as man accepts the reconciled work, reconciliation work of Christ, he becomes a child of God. Then Christ becomes your intercessor. He is the mediator for the sinner. To bring them to God. He is the intercessor for the Christian. Why does the child of God need someone to intercede for him? Because <laughs> we can be bozos. Every last one of us in this room, don't say I'm a bozo, but you can be. And, we, and have probably demonstrated that more than once in your walk with the Lord. Hello. Are you here? I mean, my son-in-law got not the newest one, the older one, because I haven't thrown any uh, flags on the new one yet. <laughs> I threw penalty flags at the dinner table so many times I had to go buy new ones. Because he was always, I mean, he was a he was a Kansas City fan and a Pittsburgh Penguin fan and a 
uh, didn't like the Raiders. That, that got him thrown out of the game. I mean, just that fact alone got him thrown out. Not even out of the stadium. Out. Well, you could understand if you're a Kansas City fan, you don't like the Raiders. And if you like the Raiders, you don't like Kansas City. Yeah, he was, a, I guess, a Royals fan. God help him. Can anybody tell me the last Major League Baseball team to win three World Series in a row? 1972. Who's the last one to win three in a row? 1972, 1973, 1974. The Oakland Athletics beat the Cincinnati Reds, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Detroit Tigers. That's back when Reggie played for the A's, Catfish played for the A's. Hello. Vita Blue, Raleigh Fingers with the mustache. Hallelujah. Last team in Major League Baseball to win three in a row. They had long hair and the hippies and um, white shoes. Baseball hated them. My team. All right. He didn't like the A's. And, of course, nobody likes the Cowboys. See, Jerry just don't know any better. We're trying to get, we're trying to get him help. Trying to get him help. Yeah. No, because everybody's seven more way back worse than the first one. I can't imagine a Cowboy fan with seven more worse than the first. Oh, Jesus. Nobody wants him. Not even the Cowboys. All right. And now we're just, we've gone to meddling and playing, so. Okay. Why does man need a mediator? Um, Romans 12, 2. Glory to God. I do not know my phone does this sometimes, but it does weird stuff. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Hallelujah. Why do we need a mediator? Because when you got born again, you were instantly a child of God. But your mind needs some help. Your thinking needs to be changed. Are you here? Just like when a man gets buried, his thinking needs to change. He cannot continue living like a slob, bum, single guy. <laughs> Hello. I mean, you know, guys, I'm just marriage counseling for free here. It don't work. Your drawers over here lined up all the way to the bathroom don't work. You know, yes, the Eastern Carolina, we don't, have, we don't wear underwear. We wear drawers. That's what they call them. It, they don't call them that where you're from? Yeah. That is the, you don't, nobody has underwear. Go get your drawers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where is it? Right next to the thingamadoodle. Oh, anyway. No, it's in the same, it's in the same drawer <laughs> as your beater. You all know that, those t-shirts they call beaters because guys wear them will beat white beaters. All right. How did I come me to get off on all that? You yeah, you gotta change your thinking. You're not single anymore. The, the 17 pizza boxes stacked up in the corner don't work. Your buddies didn't mind. They'd come in and eat three-day-old pizza out of it. Okay? Your wife doesn't want that. So you gotta, you got to renew your mind to being a married man. There's a woman in the house, and she, and she ain't going to put up with it. Now, I had a pair of shorts. I slept in for years. I got married. My wife didn't like them. I said, well, these are my favorite shorts. <laughs> <coughs> she co-conspired with my mother <coughs> who came over, and they got them together and a pair of scissors and destroyed them. 
I couldn't sleep for three nights. Oh, you had your drawers. Yeah, I didn't have yeah, my drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. How do I sleep without my sleep shorts? I mean, they were threadbare. I mean, they were, I mean, they were just about see-through. They were so thin. They had been worn so long. But they were mine, like my blankie. But, but he writes here, be not conformed to this world. <clears throat> you got to have a mediator to get you through the, con the non-conformity process. Now, the word conformed comes from a Greek word that means to be fashioned, to be molded. Much like pouring hot jello into a mold and putting it in the refrigerator and letting it gel, when you dump it out, it's taking on the form of the mold that it was poured in. Okay, that's what that Greek word conformed means, to be molded, to be fashioned. But what? According to the world. Be not conformed to this world. Don't be fashioned. Don't be molded according to this world. But be transformed. We said this the other day. Greek word metamorpho, where we get our English word metamorphosis from. And it, it, mean, it means a transformation, a complete change from one state to another. All right? But how? By the renewing of your mind. Now listen. <clears throat> Here's the thing. When you get born again, you're born again. You're alive under God. Your spirit saved. Your spirit is saved, saved, saved. Amen. Your head's messed up. You think stupid stuff. And even after a Christian, I remember my, um, our pastor that we, that we uh, went into the church after we got, um, after Jamie and I got saved and, 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 le and I went back, Raymond came back, we left our Pentecostal church and went over to a word church in town. Uh, his brother given his testimony one time, okay? Now, when our pastor got saved, you know, they said, uh, John, did you know that your, that your brother Dave was demon-possessed? He had devils. Okay, and he, and um, what happened was John David got saved first, and um, you know he got saved, but they said he was demon possessed, and that, that scared him. He's like, my brother's walking around with devils in him. Oh, he, he thought the exorcist, whatever was going on, and then and then he got saved. And you know what he did? Went down to the local store, bought a six pack. Went to his brother's house. He opened the door, had had a cigar or something in his mouth. The six pack went. I got saved. Let's celebrate. He's born again, but his mind's still messed up. And he, and he got some, has some renewal time. He's going, going to get drunk to celebrate getting saved. And he's not the first person that's done it. He said he was the best joint roller in the neighborhood, and so he'd be out witnessing the guys, licking it, lighting it, and handing it to them. <laughs> yeah, got some of them saved. You know, hey, you need Jesus. Here you go. Now, you need to get born again. You won't need that anymore. I mean, praise the Lord. <laughs> he was so yellow from using dirty needles for heroin, he, they, his nickname was Chiquita. Yeah, that was his nickname. He got delivered, praise God. Amen. I tell you, God's power is great. His delivering power is great. But when we get saved, our minds still aren't right. They've been trained to think one way your whole life. It takes time to undo that. And that's why Paul writes and says, don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed. But we're going to do it through the renewing of your mind. James writes and says, receive with meekness the engrafted word in James 1.22, which is able to save sozo, not save in the sense of getting born again, but to make whole, to make sound, to restore, all included in that meaning of that word, to make whole, make sound, to restore your suke. So sozo, save, suke, soul, okay? So the new birth is an instant process. Amen. The renewing of the mind is progressive. It takes time. And you need an intercessor while you go through bozo stage. Let's face it. It takes time to come out of bozo stage, some, some longer than others. Hello. I mean, there's just some folk that it's, it's like, whoa, I got saved, and boy, and they, they, they're just like, you know, I was crazy. 
I was, I was obnoxiously saved. People say, you know, I'm telling, I'm going to Bible school. You know, they knew me as as the kid in in, in college, community college and stuff, and I, you know, I was crazy and stuff. Then I'm telling them, I'm telling them, I'm, I'm Christian. I'm going to Bible school, be a minister. And they say, good luck. I look, I don't believe in luck. Luck's the word of Lucifer. Now, get that look off your face. Yeah, you couldn't have lucky charms. They they were they represented magical and evil. Huh? You were married? Yeah. See, another reason Cap's got to get some help. She's trying to pervert the teachings of her, of her childhood. Well, and there'll be a box of lucky charms coming to my house, with my knowledge. Hallelujah. I will not be wearing green tomorrow, and don't you dare pinch me. Okay. Now I, I I did modify some over time. I grew up. <laughs> okay. But don't you show up any lucky charms? Huh? What'd she say? What'd you say? Oh, well. Sometimes it takes longer than others. <clears throat> Glory to God. That you may know the good, the perfect, and acceptable will of God. Our spirits receive the life of God at the new birth. The next need is our minds renewed to the word. We're going to stop right here. Brother Hagin said, um, I heard him say it um, more than once. The greatest need of the church today is minds renewed to the Word of God. Is minds renewed to the Word of God. Our minds need to be renewed to the Word of God. Why? Because it changes the way we think, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we do things. Okay? All right. Let's receive our offering. If you need an offering envelope, they're on the seat back in front of it. If you're using electronic means, you can go ahead and send it through Cash App uh, or PayPal. Oh. Preferably, if you can do cash at, we like that uh, because it costs us less. And we get it quicker. I mean, you know, that's, you know, the fact we get it quicker and it costs us less is a good thing. Can y'all say amen? amen? Or a to the end. Hallelujah. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and they give. We thank you that you open up heaven's windows and you empty out on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name. And everyone agree with that by saying amen. amen. Well, anybody need to give the old-fashioned way? The offering plate's right back here. Um, otherwise, send it electronically, and praise God. All right. Those guys watching, don't forget Sunday. We'll be with you live and in person here at Expedition Church. Uh, you can join us at 6302 uh, Walter Wright Road in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. We're only 4.3 miles from the Interstate 85 Elm Street exit uh, in Greensboro. 4.3 miles. So it's, you know on the south side of the interstate. And it's not a long way. You can get over here and get to that point and you're 4.3 miles away. That's not, and it's not like we're out pumping sunshine in. Okay? Um, so, and, and the Beltline will be finished next year, some, early next year sometime. And so you'll be able to get around from anywhere in Greensboro, get, catch the Beltline, get to Elm Street, and get off and come in. Praise God. We encourage you to join us. We'd love to see you and meet you. Um, but until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. See you next time here at Expedition Church. Have a great week in the Lord. Amen. Good night.